Hi everyone, my name is Maximus, and this is Final Five, the introductory episode to a series where we will analyze the final decisions made by each team and how they affected the final score. This week we have the Tennessee Titans taking on the New York Jets in Nashville. The Titans trailed the entire game, and in the video we are going to break down some crucial plays that allowed the Titans to pull ahead and seal the deal in the last few seconds of the game. Let's get started. We begin with first and 10 from the Jets 25. They start with a quick pass to Crowell, who takes it to the sidelines and gets about 8 yards. The referees actually only give him 5, and taking a closer look at it, we see he fell forward before he got touched, but the referees gave us a uh, generous spot. On this play, Josh McCown is going to get flushed out of the pocket, and Jayon Brown makes a very nice open field tackle. Had the Jets gotten a better spot on this play, Josh McCown gained three yards and they would have a new set of downs, eliminating this next third and two. The Jets wide receivers are in bunch formation on the left side of the ball. Josh McCown gets a clean pocket to throw, but Kenny Vaccaro makes a very athletic play, knocking the ball away. Malcolm Butler gets beat on the inside of this play, but Jayon Brown bumps his wide receiver enough that he's able to catch up, so McCown chooses to challenge Vaccaro. Vaccaro sits home and waits for his receiver to come to him and make a move. He sees that he's going inside and he gets away with a little bit of a hold, but keeps his ground, follows his guy, and makes the athletic play to knock the ball away. Following the Jets' punt, Marcus Mariota makes a quick 5-yard throw to Taewon Taylor to start the next drive. On 2nd and 5, Marcus's pocket collapses and he tries to use his feet to make a play. He eventually has a wide receiver in Tajay Sharp come open across the field, but by that time he has to throw the ball away. Had Marcus moved his read off of Jonu Smith to the left, he could have seen that Tajay Sharp, who started at the opposite 30-yard hash, was coming across the field past the first down markers. Uh, easy completion missed right there. But he had people in his face, and I will give him the benefit of the doubt. Watching the replacement left guard on this play, Levin, number 60, he seeds five yards to his defensive tackle, and as Marcus steps up, he runs into a wall and is forced out of the pocket, taking the throw away. On this play, Marcus has a single read, Taewon Taylor. He doesn't like what he sees and throws the ball away immediately. Taylor is visibly upset, so let's see what happens. With a collapsing pocket, Mariota has to get the ball out. Taewon seems to run a half-effort route, looks to his inside, and the ball is already over his head and to the outside. So there may have been a miscommunication on what Taylor was supposed to be doing, and maybe just Marcus didn't like the look. The other three routes were all covered very well, and from this angle we can see that ball has very little chance of being caught by anybody. This 3 and out leads the Titans to punt. The Jets after this play will get the ball with 3 minutes 13 seconds left. The Titans have 3 timeouts and will do everything in their power to keep the Jets from scoring and making this a 2 possession game with limited amounts of time for them to come back. This first and 10 leads Crowell to the right side who makes very nice football moves getting 8 yards on the first play. This leads to 2nd and 2 where Coach Vrabel does something that the announcers really disapprove of. Let's go into the broadcast booth to see how they feel about 12. it. 12. And, you know, Mike Rabel talked about this on Friday with us. He's, you know, he says there's there's good plays, there's bad plays, and there's plays that get you beat, and you have to be able to eliminate the latter, and that's just the, the mental error there, just having too many men on the field. What a huge penalty. This choice to send 12 men on the field accomplishes two things. It stops the clock and it gets your defense at a very low percentage play of 2nd and 2. At 1st and 10, they have a higher likelihood of stopping the Jets. The Jets' next play goes for 0 yards, and on 2nd and 10, they're stopped with a gain of 5. On 3rd and 5, the veteran Derek Morgan holds the outside edge and allows the 2nd year phenom Jayon Brown to come in and make an aggressive tackle, forcing 4th and 5. On the Titans' final drive, Mariota starts with a sideline pass to Tajay Sharp that unfortunately is overthrown and goes out of bounds. One thing I want to highlight on this play is Corey Davis's route on the inside where he plants his foot and goes outside. If Mariota would have just waited and taken the second choice in this read, Davis would have had a wide open throw and room to run. I'm not saying Mariota chose the wrong read. But this play highlights Corey Davis's route running ability to create separation and Matt LaFleur's play calling that gives Mariota multiple open reads that he can choose to go with. 
On second and 10, Mariota drops back, steps up to avoid pressure, but is unable to find a receiver, and he gets taken down for the sack. But the Jets are flagged for an illegal hands to the face on the cornerback against Taewon Taylor, which gives the Titans a new set of downs, first and 10. Mariota drops back to pass, feels a little bit of pressure, the pocket collapses, he takes off, and before he even is touched, he's past the first down, breaks a tackle right there, and while he's getting hit, fumbles the ball, the Titans miraculously recover. There is so many Jets in there, I don't know how we got the ball back. With a 15-yard penalty tacked on, Anthony Ferkser puts on a clinic on how to run a post for 24 yards, setting up the Titans in the red zone with one minute left in the game. At the all-22 angle, we see he beats his man, fades to the outside, and puts his foot down going in for the post. I want to slow it down right here. Anthony Ferguson is going to break down his guy, step to the inside, get inside leverage while driving his shoulders towards the sidelines, planting his right foot, creating two yards of separation and an easy throw and catch. With the clock running at 53 seconds, the Titans do a quick five-yard out route to Tajay Sharp to stop the clock and set up second and six. On second and six, the Titans have four wideouts and one running back. Mariota narrowly avoids a sack, getting the ball thrown away and preventing a third and long. Rewatching it, the defensive tackle runs a quick stunt, charging at right tackle Conklin, lifting him in the air, beating his man, and getting towards Mariota. Mariota is wrapped up at the ankles and still gets the ball away. That may have saved this drive. This play highlights Mariota's quick release and Davis's ability to run after catching the ball. He makes the first down and makes two people miss to get in for the score. They're going to run crossing routes where Corey Davis is attacking his defender number 23, runs directly at him, sits down, catches the ball, makes two people miss, and is able to cross for the touchdown. Mariota looks him down the whole time, quick release, getting him the ball as soon as he needs it, and Davis is in for the game-winning touchdown. With 36 seconds, McCown has one final attempt to go win this game. He makes a very good completion in the middle of the field to the 45-yard line. They're going to go ahead and set up another first and 10. Jayon Brown is going to read this beautifully, get his hands in McCown's face, where he sails the ball, and Butler gets the game ceiling interception with 22 seconds left to go. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Malcolm Butler, who has been progressively getting a little bit better, seals the deal for the boys. We tighten up and get you someone who looks at you like Kerry Coombs does take the knee in the final seconds to seal out the game and the titans are now back to 500 at six and six a final score of 26 to 22 thank you everyone for watching my name is maximus and this was the first episode of final five if you liked what you saw please like and subscribe i'm always open for constructive criticism feedback and tips to improve in the future thank you for watching goodbye